sir, we've seen what happened in the last days in Afghanistan. Are you worried about Afghanistan? Extremely worried. And the reason is, um, the reason is that um, what we hoped was a political settlement would take place. Uh, the political settlement is looking difficult right now. And it's looking difficult right now because the Taliban are refusing, and we tried, I, I persuaded, tried to persuade the Taliban. This is months back, three or four months back. The Taliban senior leadership came here, and we tried to persuade them to come to some sort of a political settlement. The only thing that would stop uh, Afghanistan from descending into uh, anarchy is a political settlement. Uh, but unfortunately, the Taliban, when they were here, they felt that um, they would not, they refused to talk to Ashraf Ghani. Mm -hmm. Their condition is that as long as Ashraf Ghani is there, we are not going to talk to the Afghan government. And I, here I want to say that in 2019, when Pakistan persuaded Taliban to start talking to the Americans, uh, I suggested that they should be an, before the presidential election, they should be an interim government. Taliban do whatever we want to do. Uh, they don't realize that, um, uh, that the Taliban, the moment the Americans started drawing down their troops, and especially when they gave an exit, from then onwards, our leverage on Taliban was minuscule, diminished because the Taliban thought they had won the war. They, they had won the war by not losing to the Americans. And in their mind that once the Americans left, then, um, you know, then they had won. So to try and persuade them when there was a, when the time was given for exiting Afghanistan by Americans, it became extremely difficult to try and persuade them. And Afghan government, unfortunately, is now blaming Pakistan for what is happening there. They somehow think that Pakistan has supernatural powers. We are a superpower plus, which can, um, you know, which has such power that 70, 60, 70,000 Taliban can take on 300,000 Afghan government troops with, with air, aircrafts and with uh, modern weapons. And somehow, you know, we have that power to make them win. So. Uh, the Afghan government, and the other reason is Afghan government, I think, right now from what I can see, they are blaming Pakistan as well as they are now trying everything to somehow get the Americans back into Afghanistan. You know, the whole posturing right now is that the, they're blaming the Americans for this debacle, Pakistan and the Americans. And they are trying to somehow uh, persuade the Americans to actually intervene. And there are listeners in the American uh, uh, political system who, who are listening to the Taliban and using these things that women are at risk and all the pro, those who supported the NATO troops, they are at risk. And somehow they want the Americans to again intervene. But this is, uh, you know, uh, They've been there for 20 years. What will they do now, which they didn't do in 20 years? So it's a, it's a, so this is the situation right now. You asked me a question uh, about us being worried. We are worried because the direct impact of this descending into a, a prolonged civil war, this is what we think will happen. It will be a prolonged, protracted civil war. And the, the country that will be most affected after Afghanistan will be Pakistan. We will be affected, number one, that uh, more Pashtuns are in Pakistan than in Afghanistan. Taliban is basically a Pashtun movement, so it will flow into our Pashtun areas. And you know, it happened in two, after 2003, uh, four. it happened that our Pashtun areas uh, reacted to what was happening in Afghanistan, and Pakistan lost. 70,000 people in that because we supported the Americans. And so there's a likelihood that again in our Pashtun areas we will have problems. So that's number one. 